It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports, and the wait is over for this rivalry game. It's the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Baltimore Ravens. All that and more coming up next. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League brings us to historic Baltimore, Maryland and m and Bank Stadium. Today, we've got a good one on tap in the AFC North as it'll be the Pittsburgh Steelers taking on the Baltimore Ravens. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. At CD, it was a bit of a hectic offseason for the Ravens. The questions at quarterback, they went all the way till draft night. But in the end, Lamar Jackson is back, and these folks in Maryland, they couldn't be happier. No, they couldn't, and listen, they'll take a hectic offseason if it ends this way. Lamar Jackson back, taking every snap for their Baltimore Ravens. Brand new offensive coordinator. Don't be surprised if the ball's in the air a little bit more than what we've seen in the past. But meanwhile, the visiting Steelers come into 2023 with something to prove. They finished above 500 at 9-8 and eight last year, but wound up on the outside looking in in terms of the playoff race. And you and I both know how it is around Pittsburgh. Death taxes and the Steelers finish 500 or above. But they want to get beyond that. They want to get back to those days when the Steelers were playing deep into the playoffs for the chance to go to the Super Bowl. And they feel like this team is continuing to get better. Two hard-hitting blue-collar franchises. One of the better rivalries going. The Ravens and Steelers are underway. Devin Duvernay now returning from the end zone. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. The Ravens offense set to go to work. And it's Lamar Jackson now at his sixth NFL campaign who will lead the way. Early part of his career, defense has really had to focus on his running ability, and they still do. But now... He's turned himself into a true dual-threat quarterback. When he plants his cleats in the ground and turns it loose, good things happen downfield. Jackson looking to throw right away. It's caught by Aguilar. And he's able to get this one up to his 30 before he's out of bounds. A good safe pass there right off the bat. That's almost a rhythm play. That's what we like to call it. Get them into rhythm early, something safe, something they're confident about, something they feel good. And once that's completed, then you just keep moving from there because the confidence elevates. First carry now for Gus Edwards. And he'll fight for a couple as the tackle is made at about the 32. But we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. They go play action now. Jackson. No, oh, and that is incomplete. Oh, I thought he had that one, and that was nearly a big third down conversion to give this drive some life. Instead, they're on the spot and help separate the receiver from the ball. Fourth down, and out comes Jordan Stout here to punt. The back deep for the Steelers is Calvin Austin. This is taken at the 15. And call that an even 50 yards on the punt with seven on the return. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. The Steelers' offense set for their first possession here, and it's Kenny Pickett who will lead the way, the second-year man, Charles, from Pitt. And when you watch Kenny Pickett play, you see a young man who got better every season in college and really blossomed in his final campaign, took his game to a new level, and made him a first-round pick in the NFL. He's the type of kid who can beat you with his mind, beat you with his arm, and occasionally with his legs. A tough, skilled performer. Kenny Pickett, he's got some moxie to him. Motioning to the left is Robinson. Now they fake the jet sweep there, and a run instead with Harris. And they're gonna stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and 10. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. 
Here's second and ten. Looking to throw, pick it. And that falls to the ground, incomplete. A nice job of Lee, and now it brings up third down. Well, that was his first target of the game, and it's going to take at least one more target to get him on the board. Took a nice substantial hit to jar that catch loose from him. Incomplete pass. Throwing on third down. Here's Pickett. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A good pick up there. 26 yards. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. They run the play fake. Here's Pickett. And quick throw there is incomplete. Johnson was the intended receiver, and now it's second down. Harris running straight ahead. And across midfield he goes into Raven territory. Five yards, now it's third and five. Not a ton of room available on that one, but he made use of what space was available and gained decent yardage. They'll come up facing third and five. Pickett will look to throw it here. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot, and they connected there and picked up a first down. First and ten, here's Pickett. And his pass incomplete. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw, partner. The defense had other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Pickett sets up play action. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. He'll end up getting five out of that, but now they're looking at third down. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Back to throw, pick it. And that will be incomplete. So two third down conversions on this drive, but not able to get a third, and now they deal with fourth down. Well, it certainly appears that they're going to try and keep getting him the football. It's the third time they've looked in his direction. Unfortunately, haven't completed one yet, but I'm not sure they're going to shy away from him. They feel like they've got something there, and they want to capitalize on it. I think you're right. We're only in the first quarter, so a lot of opportunities ahead. Boswell's kick is good, and the Steelers will jump out to a three-zip lead. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks would tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. No run back here for Duvernay. Touchback out to the 25. Baltimore set to take over here for their second possession of the game. 
And they'll certainly be trying to do better than that first drive where they went three and out. And sometimes the first drive is just simply to settle nerves. You know what it's like at the start of a game with the emotion. Guys a little I bit don't, jumpy. But you do. Oh, you you understand the same way. It's just like <laughs> us calling one, right? Making sure we ease into the game, let it come to us. Well, you went and three now and they out. have that opportunity. <laughs> uh, no, you didn't go three and out. I went three and out on that first drive. I'll try to do better here. <laughs> They try to run on first down, but this defense says no dice. They stop him a couple yards behind the line of scrimmage. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through, but that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. Here's Edwards again on second down. Takes this to the 27, give him four yards. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. On third down, Jackson. And that is incomplete. How about that? Red man coverage and decided to test them early. But it proved up to the task and forced the incompletion. Here's Jordan Stout now. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. Here's Austin. 43-yard punt, but they get nine back on the return. And they will take over first and ten. So Pittsburgh retakes the field for their second offensive possession. They've got a 3-0 lead and the football as they start first and ten. his way up the middle for a gain of about four, second down. The defense thought they had that play covered, but it still got driven backward by those blockers. Those types of plays are a key part of any team's offensive game plan. It all starts up front in the trenches. Now a second and six. Pick it. And that'll be incomplete. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Pick it now from the gun here. A tough throw there across his body. It's incomplete. This defense has certainly played well so far in this game, and the coverage has been tight on just about every throw. Forced a few here so far in this game, and now it brings up fourth down. And on fourth down, Presley Harvin on to punt for the Steelers. Well, on that punt, we've got a man shaken up. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. Still in the first half, but this offense has struggled. Haven't really been able to get anything going, not only in the points category, but in the yards category. Let's see if they can do better here on this drive. And he's brought down at the 24 after a gain of four. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. They'll come up second and six now from the 24. First carry now for Justice Hill. And he'll manage only a couple here up to the 25. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. 
I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. Here is third and five. Jackson from the shotgun. That is caught. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. That one goes for 30 yards. Real part, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play that picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and ten. Play action. It's Jackson. He's got it complete to Aguilar. And he's going to get this one down to the edge of the red zone. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Bobby, you know when we call a game, we talk about Lamar Jackson and his speed, his elusiveness, and the ability to get him on the ground, how tough that is for a defense. But how about his development as a thrower, as a professional? They'll go with Hill here on first down. And he's only going to get a yard from the 20 to the 19. Well, they didn't get a whole lot out of that one, but I think you've got to continue to try and run and try and keep the defense honest. You mean or else he'll just sit back, dare you to throw it on every down? Yeah, you get your quarterback hit a lot that way, too. Now second and nine. Off the play fake, here's Jackson. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Those are the ones you dream of as defenders. I think if he gets eyes on the ball a little bit earlier, he might come away with it. Instead, it's going to wind up as just an incomplete pass. Now play number seven of this drive, but it's a tough third and nine. Jackson. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. The Steeler defense locked in, forcing an upcoming fourth down. Back-to-back -back incompletions of what was once a nice drive. Stalled out here. I'm going to give credit to the secondary partner. Never gave up as they gave up a few yards, and they came through on that play to deny that pass and force the fourth down. Tucker's kick is good, and that will tie us at 3-3. So, Charles, they are on the board after that kick. So, three drives, three points. Obviously not the start that you were hoping for, but they're able to erase that zero off the scoreboard. Yeah, I guess what you're saying is a point of drive is not what offenses are striving for by any stretch. They're happy they've got three now. They hope that that unlocks their offense for bigger points down the road. Field goals all we've had so far. 3-3 now as the kick is away. And it'll come out to the 25. Austin not going to try and return it. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there. It was a quick three and out, and they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series. But what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. Pickett leads his Steelers up here with a fresh set of downs at their own 25-yard line. Harris will start the drive out. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. Well, you often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. Now here's another carry for Harris. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. That's a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. Pick it now on first down. He'll get this to his tight end. That's Pat Fryermuth. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. 
The completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. Now a second and two. They'll bring a receiver in motion left. Now he's going to get it on the jet sweep. And Johnson going to have a Steelers first down as he'll get this across the 50 to the 49. Well, we've seen running backs in today's NFL get involved in the passing game. Maybe it's about time more receivers like that get involved in the running game. And that is something we are seeing more and more in this league, no question about it. That wasn't the biggest of gains, but it was enough to get them a first down. And it continues to test the defense. They have to think on every play about who might end up with the ball. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. That's the second time in this first quarter he's had a ball and lost it. Yeah, and I know a lot of people are wondering about his focus right now. They also wonder, will they phase him out of the game plan? I think they're going to try their best to find a way to get him kick-started. They need him. On second down, this is Harris. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. And they'll need the 39 here for a first. This is third down. Here's Pickett. And the throw there going to be incomplete. This defense, they came up with a couple of big plays in this sequence, and none better than the one right there, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. On fourth down, here's Presley Harvin on to punt. And this will be out of bounds. Now it's a question of where they'll mark it. And they'll say it crosses at the 11-yard line. And Baltimore's offense set for this next possession. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. On first and ten, it's Jackson. A short one there, caught by Likely. So the completion good for six yards, and that will bring up second down. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. This second and four. Now Jackson taps his forward jet sweep. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. And this is just a little touch pass. They send a receiver in motion, just kind of tap it forward to him. Now it doesn't turn into a huge play, but they do pick up a first down, a nice consistent gain. Throwing now, Jackson on first down. He'll throw complete to Gus Edwards. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. I have to imagine many a defensive coordinators had a sleepless night trying to game plan ways to slow down Lamar Jackson. What do you think is the most effective way to try to do it? Well, you've got to be a little counterintuitive because normally you're sitting on the wide receiver one, aren't you? But with Lamar Jackson, I'd sit on the tight end. He loves to throw into the middle of the field, loves that position as his number one target. Take that away and hope you have a corner who can stand up man-to-man -man against a speed guy in the perimeter. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. They go play action with Jackson. Looking for Bateman, he's got him complete. And he's gonna be brought down on what will be the final play of this first quarter. These two teams all tied after one. Second quarter now from Baltimore. It's the Ravens in possession as they've got it with a second and three forthcoming. Hey, 
Jackson will throw again. On target to his man, likely. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. Continuing to steadily move the ball down the field. Not big play after big play, but these moderate gains getting him first downs. And you know what they add up to, right? If you continue that pace and you continue to move it downfield, they add up into six points. That's exactly what you're looking for. They'll throw on first down with Jackson. Now one into the hands of Flowers. And he's got this down to the 35. The Raven passing game getting in sync. Another first down. Charles, to move the chains that time, they had to complete it into double coverage, and they got it done. And it's never easy overcoming multiple defenders, but he sure made it look simple. Found the right spot to exploit and won his one-on-two matchup. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Jackson going to give this one to Edwards. And he'll follow his blockers there all the way down to the 23-yard line. 12 more yards there and another first down. Some big plays in the passing game on this drive. And here's one out of the running game. So the passing game loosening things up. Now there's room to roam. Now Jackson on first down. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Normally being a big-bodied receiver plays to their advantage downfield. Go up and make the catch, take the hit, and pick up yardage. But in this case, the hit was timed really well and popped it free from his grasp. And they run the option on second down. They'll get five out of the keeper, but now it's third down. Oh, man, that wasn't far from breaking in a big way into the secondary. Read option, quarterback kept it, and while he didn't get a first down, he did get a nice chunk of yardage. Only a nice tackle prevented it from maybe going all the way. The offense on third down, they've only converted once in four tries. This will be third and five. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. Another good drive, Charles, but it looks like another that might end in a field goal try. They've made some nice plays. They've given themselves opportunities, but as you noted, another field goal attempt coming up, and that's not how they want to end drives. They've got to figure out what's the final touch that they need to push it across the goal line. Yeah, still yet to find the end zone. Tucker's kick is good, and they will take the lead here in this battle of field goals at 6-3. to three. So we're trading first half field goals. No breakthrough on the touchdown front. We got a 6-3 game. Yeah, and I know so many people look at a game through offensive eyes, right? They want to see how the game's played that way. You know how I'm going to view it, right? The defenses, to me, have responded well in this game. Like what I'm seeing from them, both of them hoping to keep it to field goals and not give up big touchdowns. So all field goals so far, 6-3 our score as the kick is away. And it'll come out to the 25. Austin not going to try and return it. The Steelers ready to take over on offense. The last series for them, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. Pickett leads his Steelers up here with a fresh set of downs at their 25-yard line. They'll start the drive with Harris, and he'll power his way forward for about four yards there on the first down carry. Nice chunk of yards on first down. It really opens up your options for what you want to do on second. You go right back to him and hope he explodes or sucker the defense in before throwing over the top. Second and six, just inside the 30. From the gun, here's Pickett. And this throw incomplete. And the defender all over him that time, but it's going to lead to third down. All right, help me out here a little bit, partner, because what I'm seeing is a passing game that's just struggled to complete anything. No rhythm, no timing. Seems like every pass is also contested well, so give some credit to the defense. Throwing on third down, here's Pickett. 
And he's unable to haul it in. So it falls incomplete over the middle third of the field. And that brings up fourth. Well, this first half has not gone according to plan so far offensively or even defensively for that matter. They could use a big-time spark somewhere, but it's not going to come on this drive as they have to punt this one away. Yeah, he's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Fair catch called for and made right at the 25-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt, and the Ravens, they'll take over. Jackson taps this forward, jet sweep. And he powers his way up past the 30. Now they did get a little gain on this play, but all in all, a nice job defensively against the touch pass. They were able to string it out towards the sideline and never let him get the corner and turn it upfield for a bigger chunk of yardage. Now second and five. Jackson, options out left. Broken tackle. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Excellent job on the keeper. 20 yards and a first down. Well, partner, for a few years there, we thought this read option play was going to take over the whole NFL. It seemed like everyone was using it. But it has been scaled back considerably in the last few seasons, mainly because people are worried about their quarterbacks getting hit. But when you call it at the right time and you use it properly, you see the type of gains you can get. A nice chunk of yardage there by the quarterback. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 49-yard line. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. Second and 10. They'll run the toss here. Edwards. And he'll get this into enemy territory, but not by much as he's down to the 48. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far. And after that last run... Not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. From the gun, it's Jackson. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers 23. Excellent play there on third down. Give him 25 yards. With the kind of game he's had so far, you had to know that on third down, that they would be looking his way, and they did for big yardage and a first down. I think the defense fell asleep at the switch on that one. I would have doubled him, tripled him, anything to keep the ball out of his hands. Throwing on first down, it's Jackson. He finds Bateman over the middle. It'll be a gain of just a yard, and it'll be second down. Complete to Likely on the out route. So the completion results there in nine yards. And third and one now. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days. But you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target. And that's how he'll shred a defense. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. That's a good job there, creating the contact to force the incompletion. And now since it's fourth down, that should set up a field goal situation. And a nice sigh of relief defensively to be able to hold them to three. Point. 
Tucker's kick is good. And they continue to lead in the battle of field goals here. It's now 9-3. to three. So that one is his third of the game. Now, if you're wondering, that's only halfway to his career high as he once had six oh, field oh, goals. Brandon, but what, six? Let's hope we don't get that again, <laughs> please. Okay, can, can we see a few touchdowns here and there? That'd be nice. Tucker now following the made field goal set to kick it away. And it'll come out to the 25. Austin not going to try and return it. Out comes the Steeler offense now, ready to see what they can do here. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting because three straight drives have ended with him putting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. On first and ten, it's Pickett. And he couldn't get that one to his man. Short of him, it's low and incomplete. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. An incomplete pass leads to second and ten from the 25. Going to run the toss here to Harris. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. But this play sequence was really kind of called in reverse. Incomplete pass on first and ten. Nice run on second and ten when probably everyone was expecting them to throw the football. Now if you're the defense, what are they going to do on third down? You're a little off balance. Trying with Pickett here on third down. And to find the open man. That's complete. And he will have a Steelers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, they obviously red man coverage their partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what think. What do you mean by that? Bro? Yeah, he made him think he was going to run a different route, probably thought he was going to take it upfield, and then he curls back inside for the completion. Now a first down carry for Harris. And he'll power ahead, but only for about three yards. Second down coming up. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. Here's Pickett on second down. And that falls to the ground, incomplete. A nice job of batting him up defensively, and now it brings up third down. And that's one of those plays where it's hard to keep two eyes on the football when you know the contact's coming, let alone getting two hands around it, hugging it to your body, and absorbing the hit, even for those big tight ends who you would think could absorb that contact. Passing game not in sync here early, and now it's fourth down. It's always a goal, and it's really nice defensively when you can rally to the football and make sure there's enough contact to force an incompletion. Force an incompletion and force another punt. On is Presley Harvin now as he'll send this one away. And he didn't quite have the backspin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. Baltimore about ready to go on offense. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize, like going to the county fair. You don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. Partner, we always talk about how important third down is. But I think first down is equally important because 
everything comes off of that play. If the defense wins the down, they are able to attack. If the offense wins the down, they might go faster, do other things, and change things up. That big play right there allows this offense to really get in gear. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. I know we're just in the second quarter and there's a ways to go in this game, but that's his second drop. I'm wondering if that's a little bit of an alarm bell for them when they start calling plays on the offensive side of the ball. His eyes already looking upfield on that last one before he brought it in. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Now it's Jackson. Oh, he tried to fit it in on the slant and it's intercepted. Miles Kellebrew with a pick. And he will return this one to the 30-yard line. Well, this had trouble written all over from the start. He's got two extra defensive backs in the game he's got to deal with. They're in a dime set. So everywhere he's looking, he's seeing a different color jersey. And sure enough, this one winds up being intercepted. And now out come the Steelers. And they'll take over here following the interception with good field position and a chance to take the lead with a touchdown. Three tight ends in the ball game here on first and ten. Pick it. He'll look to throw it. And this is going to be incomplete. I like his awareness in the pocket there. Nowhere to go with the football. So instead of forcing it to the sideline, he's just going to put this one into the harbor and live to fight another down without getting wet. Now a second and ten. Looking to throw, pick it. That's caught, Allen Robinson. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. Trying to pick it up on the ground with Harris. And he gets this down to the 18. Good enough for a first down. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. So it's pretty simple, partner. You pick up a turnover, set you up in excellent field position. The last thing you want to do is go three and out in this spot. Yeah, they would have had to settle for a field goal attempt, but now they keep those touchdown hopes alive. First down, and they go back to Harris. Linebacker Patrick Queen bringing him down. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. Here's a second and eight. Here's Pickett. Completes this one to Pickens. And he was able to shed one tackle but could not get away from there. It'll be a gain of five, and now we've got a third and three. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. On third down, here's Harris. And he's in. Touchdown, Steelers. Najee Harris. Taking it in from 11 yards out. And the Steelers have tied the ball game with a chance to take the lead. Well, they were looking to pick up the first down on third and short. They got a little more than they bargained for, finding the end zone as well. And oftentimes in short yardage situations, you get a lot of defenders stacked near the line of scrimmage, partner. So if you can get past that first wave, there's usually room to roam, and he found it. Boswell good with the extra point. And with it, his guys take the lead here by a point. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. 
Duvernay now going to bring it out. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. And we'll see if they can bounce back from that last drive in particular, if they can bounce back at the quarterback position, Charles, after throwing their first interception of the ball game. Yeah, and some guys, you know they're going to want to try and get a big play right away and take control back. Others, they're going to want to look to hit a couple shorter passes and get a little momentum back that way. But for the defense, that goal's not changing a bit. They want another pick. You're exactly right about that. In fact, you've got to watch them a little bit because in coverage, they may cut down their gaps a little bit, maybe their splits a little bit in order to try and get to the ball even faster. Operating from the 27 now. Here's second and three. Here's Jackson. And he short arms that one just a bit. It's low and incomplete. Jackson looking to throw on third. And he is caught. And he will have a Ravens first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. First down now, but that clock rolling. Here's Jackson to throw. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Normally you think the tight end's going to be able to catch the football and handle that contact, but in this case, maybe a little too much target to hit. That one was timed well. Incomplete. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Jackson will throw again. A short one there, caught by Likely. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. Now it's Jackson. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. Lamar Jackson, such a threat with those legs, able to improvise and get the first. Evident there that he learned his lesson from the last drive. No way he was going to force a throw that time when nothing broke open, kept it, and ended up running for a first down himself. On first and 10, it's Jackson. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as the clock will stop with just under 30 seconds to go in the first half. Second and a couple. Throwing is Jackson. It's Flowers. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Jackson now. Finds his man over the middle, it's likely. So five yards here, five on the play. And that'll bring up second down. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. Pay 
So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field from 28 yards out. Tucker's kick is good, and they take the lead here by two, 12-10. So a little late drama in the first half as that kick will give them the lead into intermission. Isn't this fun the way that this is unfolding? You're exactly right. The late drama, three points go up on the board, and we go into the half with a new leader. So barring a touchback, this likely the final act of the half as the kick is away. Austin elects to bring this out of the end zone. So we have reached halftime here in a tight two-point contest. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports halftime report. Coach. All right, Brandon, back to you too in just a bit. But first, welcome everyone to downtown Orlando and our EA Sports Halftime Report. We were certainly treated to an entertaining first half. Both these teams with some high points and maybe a couple of low points as well. So it's going to be a question of who can be the most disciplined team going forward. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. The Steelers going to get the football first here, trailing on the scoreboard as we are back underway on EA Sports. And we will not have a run back here as the second half starts with a touchback. The Steeler offense now with a football first here to begin the third quarter. So out of the locker rooms, here they come. Their first drive of the third quarter, and Charles, they're trailing in this ball game, but we got a tight one and set up to be a very entertaining second half. And as we know, partner, in the NFL, there's trailing and there's trailing, right? Sometimes you're discouraged by how much you're down, but in this case, this is a tight ball game, so there's a sense of optimism here. I think they went in at the half and looked at their play sheet and said, these are the plays we really like. What do you say we use them to start the second half and get us going? And he'll power ahead, but only for about three yards. Second down coming up. Not a huge carry there on first down, but not all of them will be. But still, all in all, a positive play for the offense. It's all about picking up at least a few to set up what you're going to do here on second down. Here's second and seven now from the 28. They'll keep it on the ground. Harris again. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. 66 yards rushing for him now as he's carried it 13 times. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. They hand this off to Harris. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. From the 41, here's second and six. Now Pickett will look to pass it. Open man there is Darnell Washington. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens' 45-yard line. That one good for 14 yards and a Steeler first. And maybe that touchdown on the previous drive has re-energized this offense a little bit. They've been kind of sluggish until then, but they're showing signs of life here, and they get good yardage that time and a first down. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 45-yard line. On the give, this is Harris. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. 
Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later. And let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. Pickett looking to throw on second down. A uh, quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. Well, struggles continue. Open targets, and he keeps missing them. Pressing way too much. He may have a big arm, but until he learns how to harness it and have some touch, he's going to continue to struggle. Seventh play of the drive upcoming here on third and six. Pickett back to throw. Blitz coming, and down he goes. Adafi Oway showing off the pass rush skills. Even keeping the back end for extra protection on third down, they still couldn't prevent the sack. Now it's fourth and long thanks to a terrific individual effort on defense. The Steelers send out their punter now as he's on for the fifth time here today. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. And that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. The Ravens offense getting ready now for their first possession of the second half. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at the 20. They'll try and start this drive in the air. That's going deep for Bateman. And this is incomplete. Oh, it looked like he had a pretty good line on that one. That would have been a big play, but he could not pull it in. If I'm making excuses, and I am, sometimes the sun can be difficult on a ball like that. That looked like it was going to be right there, but it's in and out of his hands. And a potential big play goes by the wayside. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. A couple of quick incompletions, and now they're just one more away from getting off the field. They've got options now. Could they dial up a blitz here or just drop everyone into coverage to crowd the throwing lanes? Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Now Jackson. as the rookie couldn't haul it in. It looked like they had something there, but I think that he was thinking about running with the football before he actually hauled it in, and that led to a big drop. The Ravens send their punter out now as he's on here to punt it away. Now Austin. So a good punt there, but a nice return of 11 yards. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. The Steeler offense set to regain possession. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. Yeah, boy, and it's tough to bring him down that time. He surges forward. He's going to get a full six out of that. Second down. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. From the 42-yard line, here's second and four. Now pick it. And this one nearly intercepted. Boy, that would have been a great time for their first pick. But instead, it's third down. And we just saw another example. These cornerbacks have played tight coverage all game long. Might start wanting to think about a few double, triple move routes to try and shake their guys free. Yes, they have, you're right. They have had no room to breathe. They're stacking momentum now. One incompletion, two incompletion. They're going for more. The Steelers send out their punter now as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. 
Fair catch signaled for and taken at about the 15-yard line. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And out will come the offense as they take over. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 16. A short one there, caught by Likely. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. 16 yards right off the bat and a first down. For many teams, the evaluation of tight ends has really changed. We used to wonder about how they would block first and foremost. Now we want to know how these guys can run because we envision them in offenses, catch the ball, how much yardage can they gain after that? And that on display there for a good pickup. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Up the middle, it's Edwards. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. They suspected it was a power play up the middle coming at them. And boy, were they right. That defense got downhill in a hurry and limited them to just a couple on first down. Second down and eight. Jackson. A dump off now to Hill. The result only four yards there on the play. And they're going to face a third down. Jackson. And that will be incomplete. <laughs> Whether that's a little grabbing, a little hand fighting, by any means necessary on third down, he was able to get the job done in the secondary and swat that one away. The Ravens send their punter out now. He's been terrific so far. Averaging over 50 yards of punt so far as this one's away. And the fair catch is taken at about the 13-yard line here. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Steelers are going to take over first and 10 deep in their own territory. Pickett leads the Steelers up here with a fresh set of downs at their own 14-yard line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. A short one there to Fryermuth. Now the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, Great hand-eye coordination. Guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. And he got blown up on that play. Back at the 20. He'll lose a yard on the play, so now they need three yards on third down. We all have habits. We can be somewhat predictable, and you know me pretty well on second down and short. What I like to say? Play action. Yeah, without a doubt, I thought that was a great spot to call it. Instead, didn't go their way, did it? Now, defense sold out for the run. Worked out well. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he will have a Steelers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, this is where reading defenses and practice time comes into play. You've got to know what you're running versus zone versus man and how to run the proper route. And they just executed that one pretty well. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. They run with Harris. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped them. Mark that down for a win in the deal. Ball on the 40 now. Here's a second and eight. 
Pickett. Completing it to the right side, Johnson. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. Give him a gain of five on the completion. And now it's third and three. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tough for guys trying to get to the football. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. And we're into the second half now. This is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. The Ravens offense now, they get set and head back onto the field. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? Beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. These offensive guys, they're tinkering like crazy. What's it gonna take to get back on track? Yeah, both sides searching for adjustments. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Isaiah likely the target that time. That'll bring up second down. Now it's Jackson. Complete to likely. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. 22 yards there, a first down. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz game. And you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. No coverage bust by the defense here. They did a nice job accounting for everybody, and that led to an incompletion. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. Up the middle, here's Edwards. And able to work about five yards out of this as he's taken down up near the 47. It's not a huge breakaway run, but if your starting running back finishes the game with averages of five or six yards per touch, you'll take that every single time. Third and five. Jackson from the shotgun. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. That's a gain of nearly 40 yards on third and medium to pick up the first. Well, that was a pretty good time for his first catch of the ball game, and it turned into a huge play as well. He's certainly not been a central part of this passing game so far in this one, but he made his presence felt there. A big pickup on third down. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Here's Jackson. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. And the red zone precision is the watchword. If the throw's a little too early, too late, maybe off a little bit, going to be a good chance that any attempt is going to be a contested one, and that one falls incomplete. Third quarter of a two-point game, a good one so far. Here's second and ten. Off the option, here's Edwards. And he'll take this one down near the 15. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they?
On third down, Jackson. And he'll be hit as he releases it. And that'll fall incomplete. Well, it's been a tough go for him. These guys have been driving down the field, but defensively, once they got their backs to the goal line, turned up the pressure, that's going to lead to a fourth down. Well played. So Jackson will head to the Ravens' sideline, and on comes Justin Tucker for the field goal try. From the left hash, just a 32-yard attempt. Tucker's kick is good, and that's going to up the lead to 15-10. to 10. So it's another field goal here. He may need to ice his leg after this one. That's now five field goals converted in this game alone. Yeah, get the trainer. They're going to need this guy. And they've needed every single one of the field goals he's made, too. If they're going to get out of here with a win, I say he gets a game ball. Tucker now following the made field goal set to kick it away. And it'll come out to the 25. Austin not going to try and return it. The Steelers ready for their next possession. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. Pickett leads the Steelers up here with a fresh set of downs at their own 25-yard line. And from the shotgun, he'll throw. He's got his tight end fire move right side. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. Call that a very strong gain of 24. And that was good protection there. No, that was great protection there because it allowed him to lock in on his receiver. Although I think he was looking for his tight end on the corner route all the way. Nice connection there for a really nice game. A first down run, good for about three. Second and seven coming up. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there. And that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play. It was only a three-yard run. But for both sides, they had to walk away from that field I'm like, okay. I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. Here's Pickett on second down. Throw out wide is incomplete. George Pickens the intended target, and it's third down. So seven yards from the first down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. Throwing on third down. Here's Pickett. I uh, had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. I think he could have scanned downfield forever, but there wasn't anything available. Ends up throwing an incompletion, and I think he'll take that. The Steelers send out their punter now, as he'll come on to kick this one away. And this punt sails over the sideline. And the spot, it looks to be right at the 25-yard line. And the Ravens taking the field. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up. But they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's yeah. just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking. And I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> <laughs> not one that I've ever met. They'll give him four yards there at its second down. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route, and he ran it a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line, but once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. On second down, here's the option. The quick feet by Jackson. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. A big time gain there on the keeper using his legs to hurt him. First down. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. 
We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. I couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and ten here. Jackson trying to complete there to Flowers. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. And these guys certainly they're not hiding what their intention is. They're absolutely showing it. They're definitely not going to sit on this lead here in the fourth quarter. Now a first down carry. It's Hill. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. On second down, here's Jackson. Throw caught by Flowers. And they just keep marching right along. First down on a pickup of eight there. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. Nine-yard line, second and six. They run once more with Edwards. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. A loss on that play, and now third down gets tougher, third and six. Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring up a key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity, because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now, to stop them, get to the ball. That means they might not be sound defensively. There could be some opportunities. And you said key third down. Highlight that word. Put it in bold. Here we go. So give them five yards there on the pitch and catch. And that's going to make it fourth down. They got the completion, but they didn't get the first down. So you've got to think if you're on the defensive side of the ball, you're pretty happy with what you just accomplished there. Yeah, guy, like you said, got him out of bounds, stopped the clock, kept him short of the marker. Fourth down, here's Jackson. And he's caught. And in for the Ravens touchdown. Charlie Kohler from four yards out. And the Ravens get an important score there to extend their lead here in this fourth quarter. Well, that's certainly going to bump up the old win probability index because now it's a two-score game here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, you're taking me into that deep water now. Win probability index. This game's definitely not over. We're not looking at a half percent or something. It's just two scores. But the way that this team has played, to me, what I've seen, they absolutely deserve to win this game. They've been the better team by far throughout. Tucker with the extra point, and it gives his guys a 12-point advantage. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And it'll come out to the 25. Austin not going to try and return it. The Steelers' offense now, they head back onto the field. And the script really is flipped for them. The momentum on the other sideline, and now they have to try and battle back from a two-score deficit. Pickett leads his Steelers up here with a fresh set of downs at their 25-yard line. He'll throw from the gun. That's complete to his tight end, Fryermuth. 
And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave them with a second and just a few inches left. Fourth quarter, every drive's so critical. And you figure, may only get one more shot after this. So a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You've got the first one for the second one to even matter. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. Timing's crucial in any route thrown, but when you throw an out, so many things are going through the mind of the receiver. Catching the ball, timing it up with the quarterback. Are my feet going to get down inbounds? On that play, all those things going through his head might have caused him to drop it. Try him with Pickett here on third down. He's got his target. That's complete. And he will have a Steelers first down, and he'll have it by plenty as they're able to keep the drive alive on third and inches. And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. Pickett's throw complete there to Johnson. Call it a gain of six on the play, and that'll make it second down. They kept the receiver in the short field, but that let his quarterback get the ball quickly to him before either guy in double coverage could react. From the 48-yard line, here's a second and four. Pick it. He'll look to throw it. That's complete to Robinson. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens 37. A solid gain of 15 yards in the sticks move. All right, this is the time of the game where they're down a couple of scores. And they've really got to get some yards in chunks. And they know the defense doesn't want to give those up. But they've got to find a way to take them anyway. Now the question is, can they string a few of those together? Now they fake the jet sweep there, and a run instead with Harris. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Pickett lost it. And it's picked up by the Ravens. Down the numbers. There he goes. And this is going to be brought back for a Baltimore touchdown. The offense, they've had some sloppy moments. Sloppy there again on that one. And it could be the backbreaker. From a defensive perspective, if the offense is going to be sloppy, you've got to take advantage of that. That's what they've done all game long. Tucker now for the extra point. And that one makes this a 19-point game. So not only the cough-up, but then the pickup on the other side, the scoop, and the score the other way, the fumble return for a touchdown. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. And it'll come out to the 25. Austin not going to try and return it. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. Pickett leads his Steelers up here with a fresh set of downs at their own 25-yard line. Harris will start the drive out. 
And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. Now whistles here before the snap, and it looks like one of the Steelers may have moved. That flag accepted, and it backs the offense up a little bit. They were looking good on second down, but now they're backed up five yards by the false start, and it's second and eight. Looking to throw, pick it. They lead big, and a major part of that has been how they've taken their play to a whole new level this second half. No points allowed since the break, and you can add another incompletion to the total number that they forced in this runaway contest. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves them staring up here at a third and eight. Now run straight ahead with Warren. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. The Steeler first down on the pickup of 11 yards. Probably wishing that they could have had a few runs like that earlier in the game, now facing this deficit in the fourth. Hard to criticize a run of that magnitude, but they really need those types of runs to go the distance and need bigger plays to try and get back into this one. On first and 10, it's Pickett. A short one there to fire you. And he'll be out of bounds up near the 45 at the 44. That'll go for a gain of seven, and it'll be second down. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. Pick it, back to throw. And that almost their first INT of the ball game. Had his sights on it, but he couldn't seal the deal. At this point in the game, they've got to continue to try anything they can. They're still working at it, even though this one feels like a lost cause. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Here's Pickett. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. Well, it just seems like all game long, there hasn't been a lot of sync quarterback to wide receiver on this side of the football. They haven't been on the same page, quarterback and receivers. Heck, they haven't been on the same grease board when you draw plays up. They haven't been on the same surface tablet that you look at on the sidelines. Nothing's worked for them. They've got to find a way to start matching each other's movements. Mike Tomlin takes a shot here, but to no avail. And the Ravens get the football back and in great shape. Well, being just short of midfield, they decide to take a crack at it on fourth down. They don't come through. Sometimes it's just showing confidence in your defense. You know that they're good and they'll take care of you. A lot of coaches during the week will announce to their team, we're going to be aggressive, guys. We're going to go for it. Hey, defense, you got me? <laughs> a little bit of a challenge to them to see if they'll pick up the rest of the team. We'll see how they respond now. They show run with three tight ends here on first down. On the handoff, Edwards. And he's going to get stopped up quickly. Give him a yard down to the 43. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a yard, so it's back to third and ten. That's a play to take note of there for the defense, I think, in the future. If you're going to try and block him, maybe you get a guard to help double-team him and try and steer him out of the play. They should have done it on that snap. On third down, here's Edwards. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. 
That winds up being a four-yard loss and leads to fourth down. An interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one behind the line of scrimmage. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. The Steelers' offense now, they head back onto the field. Even though they were able to force the punt defensively, still a big hole to climb out of, especially at this late stage of the contest. Pickett leads the Steelers up here with a fresh set of downs at their own 20-yard line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Complete, it's Johnson. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. Well, those are the types of plays they probably wish they had made more of in the first three quarters. And this deficit is going to be tough to overcome here in the fourth. But a nice first down and a pickup on that throw. Yeah, and this is where as coaches, you're looking for effort and execution, even though the scoreboard is going against you. You want to find out who's going to fight, who's going to scrap, who's going to keep their heads up and continue to play. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. So many times we talk about coverage, we're just about a defender running with a receiver, but a big part of it is understanding where the football is, finding it. In this case, when it arrived, it wasn't a surprise, and he was able to bat it away. Meanwhile, Pickett's throw complete to Fryermuth. And he's able to break out of one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Five yards, now it's third and five. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. They'll throw again with Pickett. And that is incomplete. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense are just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they've blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. Pickett, fourth down, desperation time. And he gives himself up, but not before he gets the conversion. Uh, no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. I like how he hung in there and went through his progressions, but eventually his internal clock went off and told him it was time to make a run for it, and he ends up sliding down with a solid gain. So this offense able to convert on fourth, and now a fresh set of downs here, first and ten. Throw complete, pick it to Johnson. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line, tackled there. It's a pickup of 12, second play in a row with a 12-yard gain. A three-score game here late. You can probably rule out the comeback, but certainly some kind of a moral victory to be had if they can get a few more points to close things out. And to that end, a nice pass play there to push things downfield. Yeah, and we know in this league, a loss is a loss, and no one wants anything to count as a moral victory or boy, something that feels a little bit cheap. If they trim that lead down to just two scores, that's still a benefit to this squad. Even with such a big lead late, the effort hasn't lapsed one bit. If the offense wants to score some points in this one, they're going to have to earn it. These guys are not giving up anything. Second and ten, it's Pickett again. Got a man, it's caught inside the ten. And finally, down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. Give them 32 on the play. Uh, defensively, I know they have the comfortable lead here in the fourth, but they do not want to give up big plays like that. They want to finish strong. So oftentimes in this situation, you tighten up underneath in your coverage and you bring your safeties back. They can pick up. Got his man. It's caught for a Steelers touchdown. Kenny Pickett fighting Pat Fryermuth. And the Steelers have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. The well, fourth quarter touchdown there, back to a two-score game, but time is not their ally. No, it's not, partner. They still have a pulse, but it's probably a little weak right now. A lot of things have to go right in these final two minutes plus for them. 
I think they have to be thinking onside kick here, and we know how difficult those are to recover. Extra point put through by Boswell. And there's deficit down to 12. Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. And this one recovered by the hands team for the Ravens. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we've brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. And this will probably be the final play before the two-minute warning. Edwards now on first and 10. And a decent game there as that takes us to the two-minute warning. Another run on second down, trying to cover up. And an excellent job of finding the opening as he's got this now all the way down to the 22. Let's go, man. This is where you step up. Right here, baby. Five points of contact necessary at this stage as they'll run on first down. And now with 1.52 to go, we get another pause in the action. A timeout here defensively. Second and 12, and you'd have to assume another all-out effort to stop the run is coming. Jackson, options out left. And this one also slow and developing as he's maybe getting back here to the line of scrimmage, but not much more than that. We'll see what they have drawn up here. A little bit behind the line, 12 yards needed to gain a first down. On third down, it's Hill. And he's going to be stopped well short of what he needed as the tackle is made at the 18-yard line. It's a six-yard gain, and it leaves him looking at a fourth down. And once again, leverage wins. The offensive line, lower than the defensive front. They moved him and found some good space for the guy carrying the ball. So Jackson will head to the Ravens' sideline, and on comes Justin Tucker for the field goal try. From the right hash, it's a 35-yard attempt. Tucker's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So they settle for just the three, but clearly right now anything helps trying to salt this one away in the fourth. Without a doubt, obviously a touchdown probably would have been the final nail to finish this thing off, but they still ate up time, got points, so... While it's not mission accomplished, it's darn close. Tucker now following the made field goal set to kick it away. 
And it'll come out to the 25. Austin not going to try and return it. So here's Pickett and the Steelers. Down by 15. A little over a minute to go. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. Now pick it. And his throw is going to be incomplete. That's pretty difficult to summon up offense in a two-minute drill. When your guys have struggled to put points on the board all afternoon, there's an incompletion right there. Inside a minute to go. Here's second and ten now. Pick it to throw. And that almost their first INT of the ball game. Had his sights on it, but he couldn't seal the deal. Back-to-back -back incompletions, but we know this is definitely four-down territory. Time not on their side. I don't think they want to try and get the first down in two installments. I think they've got to go and get it right here, right now. Looking to throw here. Pick it. And the throw there going to be incomplete. That means it's just one last chance left, and this has to be a first down or a touchdown, or this game's over. No choice but to go. Here's fourth down now. Here's Pickett. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And it'll be a turnover on downs. So with that, we can just about close the book on this one, Charles. Yeah, what's the old expression about Slim and none? Well, Slim just left town on that <laughs> They're one. They're down to none? Yes, exactly right. The Ravens taking a knee with victory seemingly in hand here. Let's go, baby. Let's have some Let's rock and roll. Do it. Down to a knee goes Jackson, and that should seal it. Another one in the books for his partner. Always great to be by your side. And look, both offenses, both defenses had some moments in this one, but I think you would agree these coaching staffs are also going to have some stuff to clean up on Phil. Absolutely, partner. And let's face it, any game we get to watch from up here, it's going to be a blast. Do we want to get a real job? Absolutely not. Let's keep watching the NFL all season long. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaunt. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. The Ravens are victorious here as we say so long from Baltimore.